Good Dogs Outdoor Adventure. I do some exploring today. Got to get out of Dodge. It's been real busy. But what should I take with me? 22 semi automatic, 12 gauge shotgun, 30 odd six, 20 gauge shotgun, my sword of pistols, fishing pole. Nothing in, really is in season. I'm really too interested right now. So I'm going to bring the Glock 19 for rabbit animal protection. A lot of rabbit raccoons out there, skunks, and so on. I've shot them before. So I'm going to bring my Glock 19. Or if I case I get in trouble, I can, sh I can shoot uh, the three standard three signals. So uh, the Glock 19 is going with me today. Whew. Well, that's not good to break it to my gas tank fell off. However, I always come prepared in the wilderness. I have a kit. We'll try and get this baby back and running and back to my adventure. Well, I made it to my happy spot. Uh, there's some deer flies out, but it looks like the mosquitoes still haven't hatched yet. It's June 9th, and there's no huge hatch yet. I remember one time I was June 20s something in the Adirondacks, and then they were late one year, and the mosquitoes and the black flies hatched all at once. Uh, we went home and went back later. We canceled the vacation. <laughs> but I got my thermosel with me. Uh, I never use them with deer flies, but uh, yeah, great with mosquitoes. I don't know how they are with black flies, but they're fantastic with mosquitoes. You can go during the hatch. I've been turkey hunting in a swamp during the hatch, and the mosquitoes stayed away. Usually I feed mosquitoes during the turkey season, but uh, nope, not anymore. With the DEC doing some work in forest management for better habitat. Going to a grass area, of course, that's where the ticks are. Not too many ticks in this part of New York State, but they're starting to increase. And I've had them on me in here before. Of course, the ducks have been transporting them. Ooh, look at the size of those mini apples. Um, but I'm headed for the toward a swamp hoping to find some morels so uh, that's where I'm headed now I'm starting to see some mushrooms so that's a good sign that looks like an oak tree so maybe I can find some chicken of the woods look at these right here so uh, that's a good sign of course, I'm looking at everything. I'm kind of like a, I'm in hunter-gatherer mode. <laughs> Just have my peripheral vision going, my voice down, and just stealthily going through the woods, taking my time, no hurry, because I don't want to miss something. Miss something good. See, my eyes are all looking around. Look at that bad boy. That's a big oak tree. A lot of oak trees here. So, uh, a lot of oak stumps, so good potential for uh, mushrooms. Of course, now we're getting some elms. It's a little one, but uh, as we're getting closer to the swamp, and the elms are starting to appear, I keep my eye, try and focus more on morels. 
course, uh, another benefit of the uh, clearing the forest and forest management, you get these right here. I love this. Maybe hard to see. Huckleberries and blueberries. Yes. And you're not going to get those in a deep forest without any sunlight. But uh, at least not big ones. But of course, in the Adirondacks, they're all over the tops of the mountains along the lake shores where their electric lines go through. But uh, uh, I just love the blueberries. I plan my camping trips around blueberry harvest time because then I have subsistence camping. <laughs> They are born in the water, breathe water, come on land for years, breathe air, and they go back over in the water. And, uh, yep, cool creatures. Walk south a little bit, I head back to the woods and I'll switch this compass around to uh, 100 degrees instead of 180. Or instead of 280 so I can head back to where I was and here we go by the way there's a lot of beech trees here too I love the beech for grouse of course the squirrels and stuff will eat it too in the turkeys but most of what we have here is the oak trees, the mass, and for the bears, bear populations really getting high in New York State now. And I don't know, in upstate New York, I don't know how many counties are left that you can't hunt bear. Not too many left. You know, they're actually getting a lot of reports now. We got 16 hours of light now, and there's a lot of reports of bears in towns and cities. They're out of their hibernation and um, they're hungry and the young males are pushed out of territories by the larger males and they're the ones that spread out first. They're the explorers trying to find the new territories. And uh, what we got here, we got some scat. much into the skit, how it opens, probably raccoon, but uh, I haven't seen any fur in it, but I don't have my other glasses on, it's in my backpack, but uh, um, skit is a good indicator, of course, what, if you're hunting something, what they're eating and so on, I haven't pushed any of grouse up yet, there's a lot of them in here, uh, I'm sure they're, I haven't heard any drumming on the logs either, of course it is later in the day, late in the morning, and maybe they all bred by now, um, usually I hear them uh, April, early May, so the hens are probably nesting and the males have stopped drumming as much. Okay, this is cool, here's a fiddle ahead. If I would have caught this earlier, uh, I would have a lot of fiddleheads, but uh, I don't know if there's enough here. It'd take a lot to find them. But uh, I think I'll pass on the fiddlehead for now. We'll do that another time since I only found one. <laughs> Um, been at a little, little while. I got sun doesn't set till nine o'clock. So, but here's a kind of the swamp area that I was looking for, and it has a nice canopy over it to keep the mushrooms from uh, 
you know, and the, the swamp areas of trees have a tendency to, to die. Not much, ooh, there's a bunch of mushrooms over there. I'll check those out. Those might be hens. But, um, just want to say, you know, years ago, the person that really inspired me, I love exploring. I mean, I just been, I used to burn people out and, and no one go with me. I just keep on going and going and going. I just love it. And the person that inspired me the most was Dora the Explorer and the partner Boots. I mean, they, anywhere. You never hear them complain. And uh, they're, they're just hardcore. I used to watch Dora the Explorer and Boots with my kids. And uh, it makes you just want to get off that couch and get out there. It's good stuff. But well, I was in a birch forest earlier and I was grabbing some birch bark. So that, oh, I got the propane. Forget the birch bark to start a fire. But now that I'm not near the birch forest, I'm in a pine forest and I got some resin. We use that to help get the, you know, those pine needles or pine sticks are so tiny they start real easy. Starting the fire is going to be no problem even though it rained yesterday. Uh, no problem. I got my lighter. I'm not doing the, uh, I'm not doing the bow drill today. Uh, maybe another time. But I have other stuff going on today. If I was going to spend a few days I'd be doing the bow drill more. But uh, just today. So many people are afraid of the woods and so on, but I mean, look at this carnivorous plant here. You know, you have these movies of these, uh, you know, on alien planets where these plants eat you and so on. But look at this carnivorous plant. Of course, to the insects, it's a, you know, it's a terror. But ow, ooh, what, the, what is that? Ah, uh, feed me. What? Ow, feed me. Oh, man. Okay. Yum, yum, yum. Good, good. Give me some more. What? Oh my gosh. I've created a monster. I don't know if you guys recognize that. Little shop of horrors. Uh, ha. There I found a wild hazelnut tree. Fruit's kind of small on it. But... At least I know they're in the area. I saw quite a few of them already, actually. But, uh, mostly acorns for mast and beach.